Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about shifting the aggregate demand curve. In this video we're going to examine shifts in the aggregate demand curve and what we need to examine this first is the formula. So aggregate demand is comprised of five different components of spending. First off is C, consumption by households plus I, investment by firms, plus G, spending by governments, plus X, which is exports, minus M, which is imports. Okay, so how can the aggregate demand curve in this case, the downward sloping line, which shows the relationship between the price level and GDP, how can this shift in relation to our five components here? Well, if we took the example, where we had a lack of optimism in the economy, where we had maybe job losses and the economy falling into a recession, optimism falls. What we would tend to see is that both consumption and investment would fall in that case. So for people's expectations or their optimism, what we would say is that consumption and investment were falling. And therefore, what would happen in our case over here is that the aggregate demand curve would decrease. So that would decrease spending in the economy. So aggregate demand would shift rightwards like this, giving us, or sorry, leftwards like this, which would give us a new aggregate demand curve. So we would term the old one AD1. The new one we would term AD2 and we could indicate this by two arrows to show aggregate demand has dropped. Now the key point here is the aggregate demand has dropped at every price level. So P1 over here would give us GDP1 on aggregate demand curve one here. So that level of spending corresponding to price one with a shift in our demand curve to the left what we get is point B at the exact same price level, the spending and the output level in the economy is far less. So GDP two showing a decrease in spending in the economy. However, we can have things such as, for example, government spending, and we would relate this as fiscal policy. So if we have fiscal policy, and we have a government that is using what we call expansionary fiscal policy, what that means is they are increasing government spending and or reducing taxation. In this case, it's expansionary. Government spending is a part of aggregate demand. So what we see here is expansionary fiscal policy or anything that increases spending in the economy will cause a rightward shift in the economy of aggregate demand. So we show a rightward shift here. We call this aggregate demand three. We indicate the rightward shift with our arrows here over to the right. And what we are going to show is, again, at the exact same price level as before, with an increased aggregate demand in this case, what we show is that GDP and spending in the economy has now increased to GDP three. So it has increased from our initial starting point due to a rightward shift of the demand curve. So in this case, aggregate demand increases and in our first case, aggregate demand fell. So the key rule here and the golden rule to note is when any of the four factors consumption investment government spending or exports when any of those increase so consumption investment government spending and exports if any of those increase that causes the aggregate demand to shift to the right so it shifts rightwards. However, if there is a decrease in any of these, 
if there is a decrease in consumption, investment, government spending or exports, what we do to model this for these four here, for government spending and exports, is we shift the aggregate demand curve to the left. So we have a leftward shift in aggregate demand to represent a decrease. So in this case here, we are looking at two different types of aggregate demand curve shift, right and left showing increases or decreases. The only thing that's a bit different is imports and it works counterintuitively. So if imports, imports were to increase, your demand curve, aggregate demand would shift left. If your imports were to decrease, your aggregate demand would actually shift right. So counter to the logic that we just showed here, because it is a negative figure in our equation, which means that it works in the opposite direction. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.